That's how the zombie apocalypse began at the new studio. Come on, run, Mitchell, run. Some dude bit Renfro. Bring the first aid kit. What? Who bit him? The Lord of Heaven. Run adds. I couldn't live among these people for a week. The plane crash triggered the epidemic of death that we are facing. Now the helicopter is 9. Hello everyone, Kino Jack is in touch and this is a short retelling of the 9th, 10th and 11th episodes of the 4th season of the zombie TV series Nation Z. You will definitely like these episodes, as we will meet our very old thrash friends in them. Fans of the genre of video will definitely roll in. Therefore, if you are on this channel for the first time, then follow the links in the description and watch the series from the very beginning. And as soon as this video gets thousands of likes, I'm releasing the next part. Enjoy watching. Operation Bittermark gets to Green Bay, Wisconsin, in search of a transmitter that could help them contact Sky at the Northern Light Station. They find a good place where this can happen, Channel 9's Action News Station. Several flashbacks tell us what happened to the news station when the zombie apocalypse began. The story centers on Carla McFadden, who gets her big chance to become a news anchor along with aggressive news anchor Jack Kingman, who constantly undermines her efforts. In the present, the team finds some gasoline that can ignite the generator at the station, which did not open at the beginning of the apocalypse. The Action 9 news team is still here and running around the station as zombies. So, we know how it ended. Back in the past, the news team freezes when the beginnings of a zombie apocalypse begin to unfold outside the station at the crash site. They don't know what they have on their hands yet. The news team decides to air Mike Renfra, a reporter turned into a zombie. And it goes terribly. He attacks the news producers and turns everyone into zombies, including Kingman, who later in the present attacks Murphy, Doc, and 10K, finally they finish him off. Meanwhile, at the Northern Light Station, Citizen Z tells Kai and Nana that his plane crashed, killing Uncle Casco, and he made his way back to meet his son Jay-Z. Citizen Z learns that the new zombies are smarter and faster, and they cannot be killed. While they sky figure out who is on the station, they encounter a lot more zombies than they are used to. They also find a man with Mr. Sunshine's plan from the zone. And it looks like he was part of the whole plan that all these creepy scientific zones had in mind. Back in Milwaukee, the participants of Operation Bitimark make their way to the roof of the news station to find transmitters with which they can contact the Northern Light Station. As usual, they are being chased by zombies. In the flashback, Carly also climbs the stairs to the roof, being chased by zombies. While the team makes its way to the roof, we learn about the fate of Carly McFadden. She stayed on the roof reporting the news and waited for the Helicopter 9 to pick her up, but the helicopter crashed right outside the news building, leaving Carly to die and come to life alone. Returning to the present, the revived Carly attacks the gang and dies, killed by Roberta Oren. Kaya finds a creepy zone guy in the control room transmitting information. He says it's time for him to leave, and although she tries to stop him, she runs away instead to help Citizen Z. They find out that he was looking for information on discs labeled Black Rainbow. When Citizen Z and Kai get in touch with Operation Bitmark, they are very excited to be in touch again. When they find out that the Black Rainbow is on the file drives, Roberti becomes clear and is not on the right track. The Zone is looking for a black rainbow, which she sees in her visions. Operation Bitimark reached Chicago and found it in poor condition. For years, a toxic combination of industrial chemicals, radioactive fallout, and gases from decomposing bodies in Lake Michigan disrupted the natural order of things. Now, because of the hurricane, the city is covered with thick green foam from this combination. When Doc and Murphy go into the barbershop to rest, they encounter an explosion from the past. Sketches and Sketches also made it to Chicago. Despite the barber's offer to shave and get a haircut, Doc begins to suspect that something is wrong. However, Murphy has no such doubts, and he agrees to the barber's offer. Sketches Sketches seem to be trying to warn Murphy and Doc about something, and, as it turns out, the barber at this establishment seems to want to kill them. 
It's also true that the whole shooter is upstairs, and there are zombies in the basement. It's all rigged. In the end, Doc finds out that the barber is Cell, a fraudster he knew before the apocalypse, secretly robbed Doc and even stole his underwear during the Black Summer. Then Tiny, who was shooting upstairs, sat down and robbed Doc, Murphy, sketches, sketches at gunpoint. In the end, Ten and a sergeant come to the rescue, and although our team got out of worse scrapes than this, even they look like they can't help anyone, besides they were easily robbed. After several misadventures, including an overly tan zombie and an attempt at democracy, the team realizes that the sketches from Kessie seem to be trying to pull off a scam. A new pair of robbers appears. The guys who were cheated with Kessie and Sketchy earlier by biting, pretending to be Murphy. Don't move, Dale. At the last minute, Sketchy tries to save life with Kessie, but with Kessie he throws the hole into a poisonous foam. In the end, the gang tricks all the bad guys into opening a door full of zombies in the basement below. The newly arrived bandits are caught and eaten, but Sal and Tyne kill zombies and bandits. At the moment when Cell is about to execute Doc, Murphy and Sketchy, Skeezy blows up the front door with an RPG, as a result of which Cell and Tyne are boarded up with a door bolt. It turns out that when Sketchy kissed Skeezy goodbye before he was kicked out, he gave Skeezy the key to their truck, but Sketchy accidentally swallowed it. Meanwhile, all this time Roberto Oren was making her way through the green foam and following someone who seemed to be either running away or beckoning her. When she finally catches up with him, she takes off her mask and realizes that this is the long-dead Harold Teller. He takes off his mask and tells her that everything depends on her, after which he disappears. When the foam dissipates, Operation Bittermark reunites and departs from Chicago. Meanwhile, Ikesi's sketches take over the barbershop, which, as it turns out, is called Kier Lap Dai, and begin to make plans to destroy their competitors. The team has long made a habit of following Roberta Oren. And although it draws them into all sorts of adventures, even she herself is not sure where she is going now. After leaving Chicago and going through the entire state of Illinois, the good people of Operation Betty Mark finally get to a place where they have already been, to a factory outside of Springfield, Illinois. This is the very place where the epic battle with a man for possession of Dr. Harold Teller took place. The hardest part is 10K, because it was here that he met Red and it was here that he taught Five to use a slingshot. Doc tries to bring him to his senses, but Ten, like a stoic man, continues to go to the laboratory after Roberta. When they ask her what's inside, she says she hopes she finds out. In any case, she follows her intuition deep into the factory. She knows that whatever is here, it will tell her about the plan of the Black Rainbow and possibly how to stop it. Roberta is desperately searching for answers, and her dreams still lead her and the team on long roads. Bad memories are associated with this laboratory. It was here that Murphy was able to hear Dr. Teller's wife due to his semi-somber condition. She and a few others were partial zombies. Dr. Teller's zombie wife, in particular, asked about their son, and it turned out that now that they are here, they have discovered that Dr. Teller has sealed their son Andrew in a glass box on a life support machine. Murphy says he understands him, he would give anything to keep Lucy frozen in time. Meanwhile, Roberta and Tenka go in search of what Robert's dreams are talking about. While she follows the dream, she manages to find her way through the lab and find the cans she needs. Finally, when the dream begins to fail her, she asks Ten to hit her, because this is what often causes a vision. It's hard to do, but in the end it helps, and she gets another canister of gas. Meanwhile, at the Northern Light Station, Kaya and Citizen Z are dealing with zombies. In the end, they deal with him by luring him into a body bag and repeatedly hitting him with a weapon. After they have finally dealt with him, they go in search of any information about the Black Rainbow. After reviewing all the files available there, they learn that the Black Rainbow is an old weapon of the fourth strike of the US government. The sergeant manages to put enough power on the radio to receive messages from Citizen Z and Kai, but it continues to break off. Roberta makes one of the most difficult decisions. She switches the power from Andrew's life support system to the radio so they can talk to Kai and Citizen Z. When the sergeant can't do it, Roberta offers to do it and does her a favor. 
Both teams agree that what they are against is a fourth strike weapon designed to destroy all life on Earth. This means that despite the zombie apocalypse, another wave is coming that will destroy everything on the planet, both alive and zombified. The Black Rainbow is a reboot that The Zone has been working on. To close the Black Rainbow plan, the team must go to the launch site and close it using the President's thumbprint. And so they hit the road to find the President's thumbprint. <laughs>